This is the second part of the lecture two. Um, as promised, this deals with information management and big data information management. Most of the material for this this part of the talk um, is from the information management and big data a reference architecture book um, that uh, was published by Oracle. Uh, the material is available on UB Learns and um, it is just a big white paper for of about 32 pages so it's recommended that you read uh, the entire white paper. Nonetheless, we will focus mainly on what is information management and what does it mean to do big data information management. So there are many possible definitions of information management. Primarily, it means the way by which an organization seeks to maximize efficiency by planning, collecting, storing, using, controlling, and disposing of its information. Um, so the key is to um, understand the phrase maximizing the efficiency. So given that it has access to these large volumes of information silos, um, it, it has access to these information silos, the question becomes how does an organization store it and possibly after collection and uh, gathering and then how do, do they use it to its benefit meaning that there is some reward in using these information silos. The value of the information is identified and exploited to the maximum extent possible. That is the key objective of why uh, one wants to do the information management. Now, a common issue that arises when dealing with these information silos um, are the fact that people often tend to overlook how much time is required to prepare the data, for example, uh, or how many people, how many resources are required to understand the data pre-processing step and how much time can they allocate to this kind of work. Um, there's also the question of how does one decide on the choice of tools and the way in which the information management um, is delivered in general. Measuring uh, these aspects of the uh, big data information management is somewhat even trickier because oftentimes it is not clear how, um, how much time it will be required to get a nugget of information it's not even clear how many people will be involved in actually um, doing the job and therefore what resources would be required to, to process the data, for example. So measuring these aspects of the information management is often referred to um, the shadow IT function. And um, the shadow IT functions can actually impose significant burden in costs, time, and tools uh, when developing solutions. And this is, of course, particularly true uh, with the big data information management realm. So in general, big data is no different from any other aspect of information management when it comes to adding value to a business. The questions that are key to a business are how the new data or analysis scope can actually enhance the existing set of capabilities. So for example, a business might have a certain set of tools that solves a, that solves a few problems. The question is how can we leverage the vast amounts of big data uh, be it from social media, from text, and from any other domain that you can possibly think of um, 
so that the existing solutions get a boost either in their accuracy of predictions or in some other predefined metric. So what additional opportunities for intervention or process optimization does it present? One often talks about a functional model for data analysis. And the model that you see currently uh, has four primary steps. First being the data gathering and organization, which would be self-explanatory. The second is, of course, data analysis and proposition development. So you develop hypotheses regarding what you are looking for in the data. The third is the proposal delivery. So this could involve, let's say, the development of a machine learning model of some kind, which tests the hypothesis that you had in step two. And the last step is basically monitoring feedback and control. So here, uh, the goal is to basically give feedback on the model that you've developed. For instance, it could be the case that the model that has been de developed has, let's say, a very bad accuracy of classification. So then the feedback goes that we need to improve it. And so then you devise mechanisms in your data analysis and development stage um, that will incorporate this feedback and then again perhaps rebuild the model um, and the proposition delivery in step three and then finally deliver it in step four. So this functional model for data analysis um, usually has three um, different strategies associated with it. Uh, the, uh, it is of the kind that is typically known as analyze, test, and optimize. And um, what usually happens is that these, this model uh, shows how the operational scope is really bounded by uh, the three key dimensions of strategy, technology, and culture. And to maximize potential, uh, these three dimensions should really be in balance. Um, and there is little point in defining a business strategy that cannot be supported by the organization's capacity or um, even the employee's ability to deliver uh, this kind of an IT. The next thing that we would like to talk about is how the information consumers, what are the different kinds of information consumers and what type of analysis do they typically involve themselves in. So just um, to make sure that we understand the, the chart here, at uh, the very bottom of the pyramid is the knowledge-driven business process where usually um, the, this is an automated process where decisions affecting execution of an individual transactions are made. The next layer is the uh, volume and fixed reporting where you report on the individual transactions and this is the information consumer. Then there is the next phase of these dynamic dashboards and reports and this may be particularly true for let's say streaming data where or where the need might be to report day-to-day -day performance of a business unit and could possibly be done by a business analyst. The next step is guided knowledge discovery process, which requires typically more, um, more skills and statistical knowledge um, that, that uh, typically moves a business analyst to the role of a data scientist. And there, the goal is that the information analysis has to meet the strategic goals of the business that we are working with. And the last stage is the Enterprise Performance Management, the EPM module, which is at the executive level where decisions are made regarding the strategy and direction of the business. So those are the types of consumers of this uh, information 
that that is available and this also holds true for the big data realm and uh, also mapping these functionalities to the the consumers to the type of analysis that they are uh, typically expected to do now the white paper actually gives a a detailed architecture of what is known as the information management reference architecture wherein um, a few different aspects are highlighted the first of course are the availability of these large data sources which could be um, social data data from social media such as Facebook um, LinkedIn Twitter and so on uh, usually you look at not just the text but also the video and the images that you get there's data from sensors these could be streaming there could also be relational databases so you can you name it so these are just the data sources in in various formats the question is the information management piece really takes care of how to utilize this these data sources and so what you see is that the information management layer is really broken up into what is known as a staging data uh, which is typically for loading um, uh, the data so it's if you think of an extract load transform um, extract transform load ETL kind of an ex uh, application uh, you you would typically at this point be in the staging data where your goal is to essentially load um, the kind of data into maybe a data warehouse of some kind or some temporary structure but then the key question is how much of data quality analysis do you need to really do um, and if these are if the quality of the data is not so good then um, what does what what needs to happen so those kind of decisions are actually made at the staging layer the foundation data is um, is both relational and non-relational and uh, it basically stores the entire history of the data and um, and really has a lot of information on um, the data that was collected by the organization the access and performance layer basically facilitates the access and navigation of the data Mm, and uh, for the relational data it could be things like OLAP forms or simple relational data for non-relational data this could just be um, data that has been um, especially handcrafted or cleaned or or proof test or uh, proofs of concepts have been developed on this small data and then you've somehow stored them um, into embedded data mods of some kind so this is basically the staging layer, the foundation layer, and the access and performance layer. But on top of all of this is built is built the, the knowledge discovery layer, which is the analytical discovery sandbox, and also has a rapid development sandbox. Now let me talk a little bit about this knowledge discovery layer. As you might have guessed by now, this is the layer that basically keeps track of all the um, nice analytical modules that, that people tend to use so often. It can, these two parts that it contain, um, one, the first one is the rapid development sandbox. Now the reason that you tend to have that often in big data environments is because it's really not known a priori what you're looking for in the big data. So if you, for example, um, are, look, are, have, are doing exploratory data analysis and uh, you are basically trying to, to uh, test a hypothesis that you have about the data, you may be put into the rapid development sandbox and you just do a proof of concept of some kind, for example. Once that proof of concept has been verified and validated, maybe you want to build it and take it up to the next level and you may either want to bring in more data or you want to 
to study some other aspects of it. And this would really end up being in the analytical discovery sandbox. And the analytical discovery sandbox would also typically have a lot of other algorithms built into it, such as the uh, decision tree based learning or clustering, classification, and so on and so forth. So essentially, um, this is the knowledge discovery layer. And uh, then, of course, uh, on, on the other hand, is the information access piece, where uh, you have the BI uh, abstraction and the query federation performance management, alert dashboards, reporting queries. So based on what your knowledge discovery layer finds, you might have to show some charts, videos, um, explanation of your data, and so on and so forth, and all of these uh, would definitely come under the advanced analysis and data science tools and uh, they they of course talk very uh, very much with these with the data sources uh, in order to be able to build their models so let's go a little bit more into what each of these different pieces are in the information management realm and we'll talk a little bit about what the staging data layer is. And uh, it essentially abstracts the rate at which the data is received onto the platform from the rate at which it is prepared and made available to the general community. So the key to note here is that there is a data preparation and cleanliness and cleaning phase that, uh, that needs to be added uh, so not all of the data that comes in, let's say, in the streaming format can be used for, uh, for let's say, the analytical jobs that you have. So in between the acquisition of the data and the actual analytical tools, uh, you might have to do a lot of pre-processing and ma massaging of your data. Let's say it could involve extraction of features, it could involve removal of some junk values from your data or improbable values from your data, doing some basic statistical analysis, and so on and so forth. So all of those would come into the staging data layer, which is basically uh, the, the also helps to prepare your data for any analytics task. And it's so therefore, uh, it facilitates a right time information flow uh, through the system. The data foundation layer abstracts the atomic data from the business processes. And uh, we just described it in a lot of detail. Uh, it could again it could be both relational and non-relational uh, if it for the relational data most of it is uh, stored in three normal form uh, for non-relational it could just be an original pool of invariant data business processes uh, things that don't change over time and, and so on and so forth so that's the data foundation layer the access and performance layer basically facilitates the access and navigation of the data. Um, for the relational data, it could be logically or physically structured in simple relational, longitudinal, dimensional, or OLAP forms. For the non-relational data, it is optimized for a specific analytical task. For example, you can think of um, it being in Hadoop, it may contain the data resulting from a series of MapReduce jobs, which will then become consumed by a further analysis process. Essentially, all of the intermediate files that you get from your Hadoop jobs could actually fall into this uh, access and performance layer. The final, uh, well, no, we have some more to go. So knowledge discovery layer facilitates the addition of new reporting areas uh, through development approaches and data exploration and essentially it forms a way of analysis of the data using statistical machine learning and data mining techniques. The BI abstraction and query federation layer abstracts the logical business definition from the location of the data. It presents the logical view of the data to the consumers of the BI and facilitates the rapid application development migration to the target architecture and provision of single reporting layer from uh, 
multiple federated sources. So one of the key advantages that is often cited for the big data approach is that the flexibility of the data model over and above a more traditional approach where relational data model is seen to be brittle, um, uh, the, the relational data model often tends to be brittle in the face of rapidly changing business requirements. And therefore, if it is stored in a business process in a neutral fashion, incorporating an access and performance layer, knowledge discovery layer into the design can be done quite easily. And um, so that's kind of critical in the design of the uh, big data architecture as well. Um, the other important aspect of um, these big data architectures is the, the what we talked about, uh, the sandboxes, which also provide useful support for rapid development of new reporting areas. There, um, if the goal is to develop new reports as quickly and simply as possible, uh, it may be impossible to schedule the ETL team to get work through any formalized production control in time available. So it, it helps if you, if you have predefined uh, proof of concepts developed in the sandboxes first, get small solutions, see if your hypothesis has been correctly tested, and then we go back and, and, and build an enterprise level um, uh, software of some kind. And that brings us to the end of the uh, discussion on the big data information management piece. Uh, so please feel free to read through the white paper that is available on UbiLearns. Thank you.